And we are back, people. We're on the dance floor, the Unleashed podcast for another episode. Uh, before we get in today, I just want to start and recap the episode we had last week with Jeff White. Fuck, how good was he, Ethan? He was unbelievable. He was um, former AL- AFL player, for those who didn't listen, but he's gone through a pretty crazy journey and like I picked up a lot of nuggets and dimes from him on how he just like navigates through problems and situations in his life and kind of plays a game um, with how he gets through tough moments and it was quite interesting. So if you're anyone going through a bit of a tough patch or, or wanting to figure out how they can do better with themselves, definitely listen to Jeff White and he's also got his own podcast called The Self Love Podcast. But I tell you what people, if you're not subscribed, if you're not liking our show, you, there's a good chance you will after today because my friend here, who I've known for a long time, Danielle Weber, is an absolute superstar, not just for her art, which we're going to talk about, but as a human being. What a wonderful person. Danielle, welcome oh, thanks, to the show. That was an intro. That thanks was a great intro me. if that I might add as well. That. You absolutely know. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have known each other for I such was sick, a long time. I was thinking about this today. I don't know when we met, but I just know I, I feel like I've known you since like MySpace days. So that's, yeah, wow. Like, it would have been before I went to AIS when I was 15. So, yeah, so 15 years. Yeah, you're the same age as me, probably. Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty That's full. nuts. That's but a long time. It's half I, a lifetime, our lifetime. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but <laughs> I don't know where we met. It's just because we grew no, up in the same area. same like area, it. same people, yeah. same mischief. Same mischief. We're okay <laughs> now, so it's fine. Yeah, we're out of that phase. Well, some, maybe Ugh. you. <laughs> I don't know. But um, I didn't even know you did art, like, until everyone knew you did art. Yeah, I feel like that was a general thing. Hey, like, I finished school and I got into it and everyone's like, what the like, where the hell did that come from? Like, yeah. we actually didn't even ever see you do art. Like, yeah. you just ripped that you out just, of your art. <laughs> yeah, that's what I felt like. Yeah. I'm like, one second I see you in the street next to you just fucking painting a mural around <laughs> Melbourne. I'm like, hold on a second. How did you get from that know, to that? I know, I know. I think I think because, like, my main thing was sport too. Like, was I was it? really sporty. So, like, when what I, did like, you play? Was it ripped tennis? out. It was tennis was the main one, but I was, like, ass. Like, loved soccer. I wasn't great at it, but loved footy, like, loved like everything. What? So I think when I ripped out art, everyone was like, huh? Yeah. Like, what? Next thing you're like playing, you know, yeah, no, nah, it's just weird. Where did that come from? Was that like you as a kid painting? Did you get influence from parents? Or? Yeah, definitely. No, it was um, young age. It, I really, oh, two, three years old, like as like started drawing and then I started painting eight, nine years old and then had a solid period in my teens where I didn't paint and then sort of Really? Came back to it, yeah. What? How long are we talking here? Oh, like years? Years, yeah. Shit. Yeah, years where I didn't touch anything. Um, I was an absolute menace, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then I sort of got back into it at school. And then I remember like someone like slashed a hole in like one of my paintings at school, and that ruined me. So then I didn't touch it again for a while, and then I came back to it sort of like consistently since I've been like eighteen, nineteen. I started so for the last like ten, twelve years, it's been solid. But wow. was, there was big periods in there where I didn't do anything. Wow. Okay. Because yeah. we have to go into this, and for those listening who aren't aware of Danielle's work. It's Danielle's artworks official artwork. Just Danielle's or? artwork, yeah. Yeah, Danielle's yeah. art. Yeah, just check it out online because like it is monumental the stuff she paints and like you literally make people look so real um, in such a cool funky way and it's caught so many headlines. Like we're talking like some of the like biggest celebrities and rock stars around the world have like caught wind of your work and want a piece of your art and you're doing so much like. You're actually so busy. This this is not a joke, people. I joked about this with Danielle before, but I tried to get Danielle on. And to be fair, you did come on relatively quickly for yeah. someone of your schedule, so yeah. I appreciate it. No. But your assistant just goes, oh, can we just push it out to April because Danielle's got a, a collab with Nike. <laughs> and I'm like, hold the fuck on. It's the biggest just fucking brand in the world. There, yeah, like, just like real lightly too. Oh, that's so funny. I don't, I don't know. Like I don't – like I think it's so cool and I definitely don't take these opportunities for granted – but there's like, there's always going to be something else and something next. So I sort of like just take it as it comes and I don't try to get like too caught up in like who I'm working with and because then it just keeps me sort of level-headed for everything that I'm doing. So yeah. it's so cool. And like obviously there's challenges that comes with that come with any job and yeah. um, they're all different sort of challenges. So, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. Like I'm loving this journey at the moment just because there's – 
always just opportunities being thrown at you and it's like how much can you take on and how much can you juggle so yeah, yeah there's how a lot, do you, a lot how do you on. manage that though like because now i know you've got a bit more of a team around you but like yeah. how do you because some of these pieces you would do like they're not going to take like two hours no you know what i mean so. it's funny you say team because i've literally that's only really come about in the last sort of six months like really come together which is highly impressive by the way so i did everything myself for like 10 to 12 years. Fuck. Yeah. So obviously I've had like my family, my support network around me is like amazing and mm. I wouldn't be able to do it without them. And my dad's worked with me for the last five years on murals, but in terms of like the behind the scenes stuff, um, all of my admin and everything, I did have an agency for a while, but for the, um, for three years, but for the most part, like everything, like I didn't have a solid team that was like just working. Wow. With yeah. So um, yeah, so I've got like a sort of, um, a couple of different teams that I'm working with for different aspects of my business, but um, sort of like five to six, seven, eight people at the moment, like working closely. So you're like a, like a pretty much a company. Uh, yeah. yeah, you I'm are. Not, I'm not one yet. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but in yeah, a sense, people, sure. yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah. Fucking I think hell. there's this, um, I'd realised that there was too many moving parts and like, you know, there's that saying that if, like I, I should be just doing what I'm good at doing and if I'm not, if I'm still doing things that I'm not great at doing and I get stuck on them, like you need to outsource that. So Okay. Well, with your art, like and I don't know if this has any similarity to sport, but like were you naturally gifted at it? Do you did you work at it to be as good as you were? Like how did like because I've just seen you from, you know, in the streets, as I yeah. said, knowing you for a long time, to then just painting murals. Like yeah. what was in between that that made you be able to do that? I definitely was born with a passion, like and and I perhaps see things differently. Um but I definitely wasn't born painting like I do now. So <laughs> yeah, I think I have, uh, you know, I have, a, I have, I definitely have a talent. Uh, I don't, I know a lot of artists that I believe are naturally, they're more of an artistic genius and they're probably naturally more talented. I feel like I've had to work my ass off to get to like, I guess, where I am now. Um, and more so from a creative perspective as well. Like I've had to really push myself. I don't just sit down and come up with ideas. Like I really need to like, there's right. hours and hours of research and trying to trigger that mind. Like, Is this for like techniques of, of how to like paint or- That, anything? but more also like just design concepts. Cause there's obviously before you start a mural, you've got like a massive design concept that you generally have to get approved from whoever you're working for. Wow. Uh, and they, you know, I'm quite fortunate that people do give me quite a lot of creative freedom in that aspect. And <laughs> most of the time I'm sitting there for like weeks on end, like just ripping my hair out, trying to figure out what I'm going to paint. When it comes together, like, you know, because I've, I've spoken to my partner about it, he's like, you should outsource the design process. And I said, I just don't think I'd enjoy the execution as much if I wasn't there you're for more the whole attached process. To it, yeah, yeah. So as much as it's so hard and it really gets me like, Oh. It it like I just I need to be there for that whole process. Like so you'd see it in the end result if it wasn't me the whole way through. I think so. So for instance, if we're talking like in relation to something like if it was like a dog in a park, yeah. you're talking about like how that would look like from a stencil, like a pencil drawing almost point of view to then before you, you paint anything. Yeah, there's a lot more work that goes into the preparation Far than, out. than the actual execution. Is that the worst part for you? <laughs> it's it's the most challenging part because right. I get to the job and I'm just in the flow state and like painting it, but there's so much that goes into behind the scenes. So in I I just like went on a tangent, but in res- okay. no, <laughs> in, in respect to your question, um, I've definitely like I was born with a talent, but I d- I definitely have had to work hard and you know murals. I you know obviously was fortunate to be educated through school and through further education. However, um, murals, I feel like, are something that are not taught in schools, how to run a business, how to do a design brief, how to, you know, all these things I've just had to learn along the way and just make mistakes as I go and really just, I feel like, be a bit of a guinea pig. (laughs) Do you think think that um, harder road as such is is actually better for you? Yeah. Because, like, it's all self-taught now, like you've... Yeah, wouldn't change a thing. Really? Yeah. I That's know there's. I know that now I've probably developed enough or like been through enough road homes and developed enough skills um, and learnt the hard way that I can help other artists perhaps not go through that long journey and, and, and give them a few like one, two, skip a few. It's like, you know, just <coughs> here's, your, here's your road in. Um, so I'm confident in if I can help a few people do that. Um, but it's like shaped who I am and, and like I think I'm – I'm probably going to get like resilience tattooed down my back because I think it's just like, right, everyone yeah. knows running a business like it's so rough like yeah. it's so it's so good and then when it, you love it it's like 
it's just like a, even more of a whirlwind. So you like, you really, really love what you do, hey? Yeah, I love it. Wow. So I've got a bit of a funny segment here for okay. you now because rumor on the street, d- despite your amazing artwork, yeah. you did almost fail art school. Yeah. So, and, and one of the catches here was one of the reasons I why. I should bring in my certificate that says like 51. 51. Yeah, I think. I yeah. feel like you should, that should be like in the middle of your office when you have a big yeah, creative office space. Just hey. like, that means fuck all people. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, but one yeah. of the reasons why you almost failed was because you were actually delivering a painting to Dwayne Johnson, which is known as The Rock for everyone that would know him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I actually have a few curveballs here because okay. we're going to play a true and false segment because oh, look, I've it. done a bit of research. Are we swearing on this because I'm pretty sure I've dropped I've, the F-bomb I've dropped times. the F-bomb. Yeah. Point, yeah. <laughs> I love when people ask that. I'm like, have you not heard me the first 10 minutes? Um, no, but there's a there's a bit of an interesting story and we have a lot of mutual friends. Yeah. So I don't know how accurate some of these statements are, but this I is around it. the time you would have potentially almost failed art score, at least maybe you thought you were. And okay. Because um, you, like you would... To put things into perspective, this is like six years ago. Yeah, now. six years ago. Yeah. Which Was this... Seven, so, coming up to seven years ago. Would that be fair to say around that time frame is when you kind of blew up? Or was it before that your artwork was really well known? Because I definitely know no, that it, like... it was down rock, around that. Yeah, The Rock was like a big part of like growing the yep. following and the yep, interest yep, and yep. stuff. That was definitely a big um, leap for me then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, here's another side to Daniel Ever, everyone. But, okay, so you were off travelling to deliver a very important piece to The Rock. Um, and there was a few logistical challenges, let's yep. say. So true or false. And you can elaborate on the true or false statement okay. if you like. But you were stranded in Cuba with no money. And you were actually trying to come back to Melbourne for uni. True. True. Okay. Well, stranded. Why were we stranded? In so Cuba? before I left for Cuba, I made sure I, <laughs> I made sure that I called my credit card company that I could access money when I got there because I knew that you know it's a communist country. It's very hard like to get a hold of internet, phone, money. I got there. Before you tell the solution, this might be the next question. So go. just keep saying the problem statement before you tell the solution of what happened because I think I may know the solution. And okay. by the solution, I mean is how you got out of yeah, being yeah, stranded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Basically, my credit card didn't work. I had to meet some random bloke to get dinner that night because I had to <laughs> <get> money. <laughs> Jesus. I had plans the next random day. Random Cuban guy like on the street? No, he was or actually like-, like an Italian really creepy doctor. <laughs> and... Um, Oh, like it just gives me goosebumps. The lengths you go it. to. Like the lengths. Like I've only spoken to one person about this, I think, in detail, so I won't go in detail here. Okay. But um, I was planning on like the next steps to, yeah, yeah, I won't, I won't go into okay, it. Okay, so. the solution. All right, so there, there we go. True. So Danielle's currently stranded in Cuba. Then this is what fascinates me. You miraculously, in Cuba, have a long lost cousin <laughs> that's on an island so you can get money off some, like a relative. Is that true? True. Okay, that was the one. one that was the one I, I will tell everyone that I thought was going to be true because someone told me that, and I'm like, how the like? F- so what the fuck? Any chances yeah. of that? They're, they're, that they're not locals. The, the ch- no, they they're from Italy, and they were on. There's this like exclusive island that only Italians are allowed to go to, called Cayo Largo. I think that's how you say it. That just came to my head. It could not be. <laughs> that, that sounds Fact very check, like, everyone. <laughs> but that's – and, like, they were just there on holiday by coincidence and I had no idea that they wow. were there. But obviously there was an SOS call to the fam being like, I have no mo- – I tried. Like, I tried the banks. I tried, like, the Western Union. I tried – I had, like – I'd paid for my – like, with my last money um, for my accommodation that night. I just don't even know. Like, I'm the one person that carries cash with me everywhere and like, yeah. I don't know how I ended up in that situation. Did you lose money? Is that why? Or because what I had presumed, and this isn't a, a, a true or false um, question, but at this point, was it you were thinking of coming back to Melbourne to finish uni or were you trying to get money so you could go back or you could go to America and give this painting or piece to the rock? What was the... I was trying to get money to survive the next two weeks. So so that was, what happened no... to your budgetary plans there? Like oh, it... no, my budget was like well gone. Like oh, when right. I made that stupid, sorry, Mike, when I made that stupid decision, not even a decision because I thought that I had my, like my, my, what's it, O's... T's crossed and... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your eyes uh, crossed your T's? Yeah, 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 that one. Like, <laughs> I literally would never have expected myself to end up in a country where... Like, I was I was supposed to travel Cuba and 
I was like, I'll get money out when I get there because I've just come from America. Like, it'll be fine. Um, but it, it was too, I needed to get money to, like, to, 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 like, finish that trip. Like, I wouldn't have had money to eat, so nothing. Either way, or I would have had to come way, home. fucked, yeah. Yeah, I was fucked. Like, or I would have had to get someone back home to book me a flight out and home. Oh, my like, gosh. Yeah. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting, right? Because now you've <laughs> – your relatives from Italy have saved you. Yeah. So you made a decision here to not come home. Yeah. You thought, fuck it, I need to get this piece to the rock yeah. and potentially fail art school. Yeah. So being Danielle Weber and probably <laughs> Arius – you happen to not just go with the painting, but yeah. I was told that you might have took some illegal, illegal substances. And I'm not talking illicit drugs. I'm talking Cuban cigars and I think it was like alcohol, like mm-hmm. a, a rum or something that's prohibited in the States. True. <laughs> Did you know that? No, I didn't know. I like, feel like I know Cuban cigars are kind of pretty like hard to get in anywhere. I didn't know that. I had no idea. So I had what, no idea. Did you get idea. arrested? Well, I'm probably lucky that I didn't. Um, Whoa. Well, I did miss my flight because I got held up in like t- um, Houston. Oh, American customs are not I nice. Was, like, I don't cry, and I got through that, and I cried. But the key words here were: "You are going to get on a flight back to Australia now. We're not going to take these these um, products off you, but you are going to do a U turn and go to Australia now." Wow. But I didn't. <laughs> how, but how? Did you, did, did you? I went to Boston, <laughs> delivered them to The Rock, and then I went home. <laughs> but did they know you went to Boston? I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually not sure. That's a good question. I'm not sure of that. Oh, my God. But oh I probably, like, I wouldn't have even thought of, like, what I was doing at that point. Obviously, you look back and you're like, you are an idiot. See, this is six, seven years ago, Danielle Webber. Yeah, I know. This is, who, this is who you, what you're capable of being. I definitely think things through a little bit more now. <laughs> but <laughs> so you touched on that, right? And I think the reason you went to Boston is because The Rock was filming a movie there. Yeah. So this is a true or false. This is the final true or false. But you delivered a, a painting to him that you actually forgot. Mm. You left it. I think it was at the airport. Mm. And you went on set of, what was the movie? It was Central Intelligence. Central Intelligence, yeah. And he took you around the set is what I was told. True. Bro. Yeah. That is fucking... I got the painting back. I remembered as I was boarding the plane. So what was the painting of? A painting of him and his mum. And then so the reason for you going to this trip is did he see your artwork online? Had you done a painting of him and he saw it? Yes. And did he ask for this painting or did you just do it as like a gesture? I did it as a gift to say thank you. Wow. Yeah. You're a smooth mover. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> You've literally broken in yeah. to the country to give him this. Oh, literally. Like, literally taking him. And then, like, when he posted it that I had, like, taken Cuban cigars and So rum, were, that, were they for, the, oh, were they for the like, rock? Wow, right? this is like... So a, these are for the rock. <laughs> they're going to come get me. <laughs> oh, so that you took those in for the rock. Yeah. That wasn't like Danielle's pastime rubbing nah. cigars. Oh, I took right. some home too. <laughs> <laughs> I delivered some to him. And then at that point in time, I thought that... He, because I knew he'd loved tequila, but I got confused and I got his, him rum. But, you know, same, same. Wow. <laughs> really. Okay. Yeah. That is like a profound, like you could almost write a book on that, like delivering should, a painting eh? to the rock. It's funny. You don't think it's a big deal, but until you like place it like that and like you piece those things together. I like, put a lot of thought into actually, breaking Actually, I'm that. an idiot. Like. <laughs> yeah, I put a lot of thought into breaking that. That was good. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm well, impressed. I didn't think I'd get them all right. I they definitely knew. true. Yeah. Which is concerning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because I was like, I'll throw a few outlandish ones in there. But no, so this is like, as I said, this is the time you started to get quite big because I I recall this clearest day, like The Rock either reshared stuff or was commenting on your stuff and you're like, what the fuck, this is a girl from the southeast in Melbourne, like just conversing with Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, Yeah. like how, right? But was it, when did you start to realise you were actually like good at what you do? Like when did you start to realise you could be like Danielle's artwork official that you are now? Was it around this time? It was, was it around before? that. It was definitely around that time. Um, I think when someone like that and someone who's achieved so much and who's highly respected, I, it sort of did stop me in my tracks. And because obviously I had doubt up until then, and I still had doubts sort of following that experience. Mm. But it was around that time where I was like, okay, maybe you know this is possible. Maybe I can make it work for something. Wow. bigger and greater and, and whatnot. So, uh, and that was some of the questions that I did ask. It wasn't really like, it was never about, oh, meeting him and it's him as a person. It's sort of like, well, why did you stop to to acknowledge my work? That was how I, it was just sort of Did you ask me. him that in a sense? I did. And he sort of just said, he goes, you know, you're always 
like he didn't necessarily say, oh, like you're the best artist in the world. And I, I know that, like I'm not, you know, like, and a lot of my work um, in the beginning was very commercial and it still is, has a like, real commercial element. So he's just like, oh, you're always smiling and like just the energy that you, like you're just like, you're always smiling. Like it's, it was like separate that, from painting in a sense. He just yeah, liked to you. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm. That's actually insane. Because I see like paintings in art galleries and like I'm not artistic. Yeah. And I question like, how much effort and time has gone to some paintings, but there's like some sort of expression or abstract nature to it that's like meaningful. Yeah. But like I sometimes then I see your work and I'm like, now that's a fucking painting. Like, yeah. Yeah. See, and that's the thing. That's so subjective. Really Everyone has yeah. a different, you know. I think I think the biggest thing about art and is what I've come to learn and what I have conversations with The Rock about is because he sees his work as art too and everyone has their different art forms. Um, and he just says, you know, for him like – as long as you can connect to people and and f- how, have someone feel something on the other end, it doesn't matter what it may, it may be. Like everyone mm. will interpret it differently, and that's why art is subjective. Uh, so you saying, oh, sometimes I don't I understand abstract. Like that's so fine. Like because you'll you'll you know I'll I'll do some storytelling through for athletes. Like oh, that's how I see it. Like I ah. I tell stories through my work, and you'll be able to connect to that. Maybe not for the for the athlete that they are, but for the journey that they've had. Okay. So. Um, yeah, so I think that's where some people are like, but I don't understand it. And I was like, well, you might not understand everything. You might not understand all art, but you might connect to something on a different level, you know? So Interesting. Yeah. That was well broken down. Now, mm. there, now I can Hope connect. That helps. Yeah, it does. Now you're like, this is how I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now let me Do tell you, go you to about an this. Art girl, like, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I know about Van Gogh. Come yeah. and look at this one. <laughs> no, but um, uh, can you tell me about the next few months after that? Like, from a working perspective, did you get like bombarded with work or requests or interests? Yes. Yeah, it was what, a How lot. did you navigate through that? Like, what was that like? I think it was a point where, if we go back to uni, like I was coming up to my last semester, I'd just done five years. Like it was the last few weeks of my five-year degrees. And I had all these like carrots basically just dangling in front of me. Like there was a bit of media that contacted me. There was like some really cool jobs, but I had to finish my degree. So oh, it was kind of like... It's just in the way of it was life. Just like, it was just there but I just sort of was like you know what like things happen how they're supposed to we'll just finish that um you know perhaps maybe if I would have taken some of those opportunities I I would have I was gonna say I have to blow out that doesn't <laughs> <laughs> but it's in like I would have like not been able to cope so yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's not uh I think uh, like a lot of people would look back on those moments being like oh, I should have could have would have but like I just sort of like that it wasn't meant to be like so you turned down a lot of things that yeah straight yeah. after that that yeah, could have yeah. propelled you maybe further at the time yeah at that time yeah wow. so it wasn't and and that's that's one thing he has always said to me is like this isn't a race like people are always coming to me like you could do this you could do that you could do this you could do that like and I'm just like yeah like it's cool like you what know. was he what was he like with you was he quite like um, cause I assume he's very friendly, but was he giving you like, what was the, you, you've touched on like advice and wisdom he's giving mm. you. Was he just constantly just like providing nuggets and dimes to help you? Is that what it was like? Or yeah. was he pretty chill? Or? Yeah, definitely. Like I still have contact with him now and he, that's, that's what, like what I try to take from his wisdom and like he, what his knowledge and what he's learned in his journey. Um, and I think it just makes me realize like no matter where you are, in your journey, you're always going to want more and you're always, there's like, you're never going to just like rest on that, like that one success. There's always Mm going to be more. And like, that's someone like him who, who like inspires me and you just, you never get complacent in what you do. So me like sitting with him, like he, I I was trying to ask him questions and he was just asking questions about me and my family and stuff. So that's just the sort of person he is. And I feel like he will always be. So if that's not enough of an inspiration to take that from yeah. him, like it's, yeah. Cause I feel like you have a bit of a resemblance uh, to him because he's like always in like a movie, like it's just nonstop. His life's yeah. nonstop. And I feel like that's the way your schedule is too. Yeah. So, so is there a point um, through your process from painting or the business side of things where it actually starts to feel like work to you and it's a bit sort of over the top or are you always just enjoying this, like absolutely loving what you're doing? Uh, definitely. It'd be lying if I didn't say that um, there's a lot of moments where I'm like, ah, like why do you, why do, you do this? <laughs> like, and you hate it. And I think uh, that's a big a big thing for people who do what they love, they get they get very um, caught up on the fact if they're not enjoying it and they think they have to enjoy it all the time because they love it. So I think 
like it's so it's yeah it, it is a job at the end of the day and nothing like that's what life is like you're not gonna you know I love what I do but there's always going to be aspects of my business and what I do that I don't love but mm. you can't it's not sunshine and roses like you can't expect life to be that and it's the same that translates into your work and into your relationships and everything as well so yeah um I'm so fine with that and I think that if you didn't have you know, I speak about approaching highs and lows the same, but if you didn't have those highs and lows, like how do we know what the good times are? So it's sort of like makes you appreciate the work that you really, really love and then it perhaps just makes you stronger to approach the difficult okay. circumstances as well. So with like, because of it, we touched on like you'd obviously renowned for a lot of the murals you've done around Melbourne and, and like particularly in like a lot of collaborative spaces, whether they be gyms or like, you know, different sort of centres and stuff where people can see your work. But how do you, <clears throat> like what do you do to like, get some time away from it like how do you kind of relax and separate yourself from the art when you're so like full yeah, on what you're full doing on. look um family i'm very family orientated i love to spend time with my family um and gym is definitely something that i need to do i meditate most mornings as well do you what's your meditation routine just five minutes i don't do anything longer just than that. silence yeah no five minutes like music or okay. like a guided breathing or or even just like a gratitude or a mindfulness one or something like that um, if I, I don't meditate every morning, like if I go to the gym, I won't meditate, um, mm -hmm. but I try to do something for like just even if it's a couple of minutes, just something for myself okay. for like before I, yeah. Wow. Because some of these day. pieces of work you would do, like how long could they take? Like uh, let's just like reference like a mural up, up around the city. Uh, I just finished one. Um, I did it in 10 days, but it was about 120 hours in 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Jesus. So it was a, yeah. That's ridiculous. It's yeah. like 12 hours a day. Yeah. Far out. That's yeah, fun. That's full on. I love it. You love it? Like yeah. you, <laughs> I don't know if you're saying Mur that's like I no, hate no, it. No, 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 no. You do um, love it. It was like that mural. Some like some jobs I obviously love more than others. So I get more freedom or if I just really connect to them when I'm painting them, I have like, you know, a brief to work to, but they're like, just do what you want. And it's like, hmm. woo. Um, so that one was like mass flow state. So okay. fun. Oh, that's yeah. cool. So speaking of, because I, when I think of like artists, it's similar to like sport and music or any sort of aspiring. It's a discipline, definitely. Yeah, discipline. Yeah, but anyone aspiring to be something in a space, there's usually inspiration to be that. Is there anyone that in your space that has always inspired your work, that you kind of look out for their work a lot, that's really sort of progressed you as an artist? Not really, hey. I mean, I find, I feel like I find more inspiration from people's journeys and like, and that may be athletes or, um, you know, right. speakers or like I listen to a lot of podcasts, a whole different heaps, heaps of people. And I feel like, um, obviously I admire and respect a lot of artists' work, like some, you know, like Dali and Van Gogh's, like all the old school Mm -hmm. artists um and then there's some street artists as well but i don't really idolize anyone in particular i try to sort of just uh, i guess take inspiration from like other like different people i guess and yeah yeah so there's no one specific that's pretty interesting mm. but you take inspiration from other industries mm. yeah none known to yours yeah i it just feels like that fuels your passion and also like i feel like a lot of people can get caught up in like trying to find a style or trying to um, I guess at uni, that's what they said. They wanted us to like research artists and then like paint like their work or like versions of their work. I'm like, this is weird. Like, which I, I love doing because it sort of makes you realize what you do and don't want to do. Mm. But I sort of, I don't want to get caught up or like, you know, when you like look at something for so long, then like subconsciously you end up doing that. I sort of still, I think I will eventually come to a style or a certain um, way that I create. But right now I just like enjoy doing everything. So I'm just okay. like, well, if you don't need to, it's a lot harder to come to that one style and stick yeah. by it. But at the moment I'm just like, oh, I just enjoy doing everything. So it hasn't, I haven't put myself in a box yet. Because, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Because you've <laughs> you, you referenced like you're doing more sort of commercial orientated art. But like mm. is there sort of, would you go into like the more boutique, I don't know, contemporary kind of form where? Definitely. Yeah. It's that... definitely a goal of where, where like probably when I'm older, um, I just think for now, like there's so many, there's so much opportunity. And if I sort of just like narrow it down to one thing, like I would just be like, oh, but I'm missing out on this, 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 this. So <sighs> I just, I just think as long as you're enjoying the post process, like a lot of um, artists, like it can get a little bit political in a sense, like, oh, like that's commercial. Like, why is she doing that? Why is she doing that? And I'm just like, it, I, I'm all about like, as, as long as you're creating and you're enjoying it, like who cares what you're doing? Like just, yeah. just go out and create, you develop your skills, you open your, like you open your opportunity. Um, and, you know, eventually when the time's right, I might find my own style and, and become a little bit more, I guess, boutique, as you said, but at the moment I'm just sort of like. How, how hard is it to get 
like what's the process to get a painting off you, for example? Like, it, and and how long would it take for you know for someone to have that piece of art because you're pretty busy? Yeah. And then on top of that, so I know there's a lot of questions, but how often would you have to say no because of like the craziness of your schedule? Daily. Or, daily. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Daily. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of disappointed know, people out there. Well, that's the thing. Like, I th- I think like. For canvases, I don't really take them on anymore. Um, I think it's not because I sort of just got to the point where I was like, people were waiting like a year and a half for a piece and it's just like, that's not, and not because I couldn't fit it in, but I just had like murals and bigger things in my schedule that like, you don't want to be like rushing that piece and then you see it in the end result. So I was just like, if I say no, I'm sort of being more true to myself and my and my craft and, and not disappointing um, clients on the other end. Like it's a big investment. It's a piece of art that you know, you've committed to. So um, now if I do take on canvases, I just say like, look, there's like early next year. Like I generally give a year. Whoa, yeah. that is how busy you are. Oh, and I say don't like hound me about it because, yeah. Yeah, that's be annoying. Yeah. And, yeah, and the murals, like I'm probably like booked maybe, like I'm sort of done for, like I'm sort of booked until like June this year. Like that's, yeah. Wow. What are we just that's literally start of April? Yeah. So if someone wanted to come to you for a mural, it's going to be July onwards right now. Yeah, it depends on how big it is. But yeah. if it's a big project, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. It's now we've um we've spoken about this on this show before because like I, I know you know me, but like I love crypto. Yeah, absolutely love it. Which means I love the NFT space. Yeah, and we had a couple of boys on at the start of the year um, from Melbourne Storm who actually released their own NFT and we had them on and we're speaking about it. So for anyone that listened to that episode, you'll probably be up to speed on this conversation. But if you're not sure of the NFT space or even the crypto space as such, go back to listen to the first episode of this year with Melbourne Storm boys because we kind of detail it on a very elementary level for everyone to understand but non-fungible tokens like this is a wild wild west for mm. art in a sense and i'm so happy to see you dabble into it because yeah. i feel like it makes sense but when did that when did you know that that was something you wanted to do it's probably this time last year uh which is pretty early in yeah the space. yeah yeah uh you know covid was pretty rough for everyone i feel um on different levels and and it was sort of as a creative that like we weren't technically allowed to work. I sort of pushed on um, through murals and things like that. And then it was a lot of studio time. Felt sorry for myself for a week. And then I was like, you know what? We've got like so much opportunity. If, if you can't do one thing, shift to another thing. And that's just a sign that maybe you've got some time that you would never have otherwise. So I sort of use that time to really like tech is not something that's been familiar to me. It's like I've been very resistant over the last 10 years because it's just like too hard basket. So I did get into crypto about three or four years ago. Um, And yeah, when NFT sort of popped up uh, a year ago, I was just like, I was late to web two. I don't want to be late to web three. Uh, And what have you got to lose? as a creative really like it's time of course your ip your investment your energy but what have i got to lose to just give it a shot and i think what i saw from a lot of creatives and corporations and athletes and everyone who's diving into it is just really push them to think outside the box and put forward like their work like their own work like it's not you know of, of course there's collaborations and everything as well but I was just like, you know what, I've been working off commissions and um, I've had briefs for the last 10 years. So why wouldn't I just come up with my own collections and I can tell some stories along the way and, and, and sort of tell my own story and see how it goes. It's it's insane. I love that description because, yeah, for everyone listening, the NFT space, it's pretty much like a, a collaborative space where people are putting up, you know, different things from artwork to real estate to um, memories or different items that associate with some sort of roadmap of companies or individual collections, as Danielle yep. said, where you can purchase these products or digital asset JPEGs yep. to an extent yep. via um, cryptocurrency. But so you've put how many up now? Six, you said? Six. So I have uh, my first collection was three one of ones and my second was three one of ones. Wow. Uh, and I my next one is probably a couple of weeks off and that's 121. So for for you when you're, and I want to go back to like the start of um, 
how you actually would develop this into an NFT because for me that's interesting. But yeah. how like do you – because with most NFT collections that drop, there's usually like a mint price on a yep. website. How are you going to do that? Are you having like yep. a certain mint price for this and then people can resell it or – Yes, so for the for the third collection, it will be a mint a set mint price. What is it going to be? Of um, 0. 0.22. 0. 0.22, that's yeah. good price. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think the reason why – this mint price is lower than what the initial pieces are sold for is because I did not expect my one of ones to sell for that much. It's a new space. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to test the waters. Um, they were auctioned. So the auctions just went Yeah, because what you say is some of them went for 15. Yeah. One went for 15, one went for 10. 15K, yeah. 15, not 15 Ethereum. I, I was going to say. <laughs> but you said 15 ETH. I was no, like, damn, Tanya. No, 15 Well, that's what, 3 ETH almost or yeah, 2 ETH? 3.3, I think, at the time. So, it was, so yeah. people listing 0.22 for a mint of Daniel's art is very cheap. Yes. <laughs> In yeah. other words, if they're yeah. going for, you know, quadruple. So because so, I've always been about, like, as you mentioned before, like if I have to say no, I've always been wanted it to be accessible. And that's why I made prints because I was saying no to, like, canvases. So I was like, okay, but here you can buy a print. We frame it. We do everything. Mm. I'll sign it. Um, so this is essentially my way of now doing that in as an NFT, as a digital asset. But it is more legit in a sense that it is authenticated. Um, you know, I'll, I'm, we are working on building my own smart contracts as well. Um, and obviously there'll be unlockable like utility to uh, which I'm still building and still working towards and um, just like trying to do it, everything right. I don't want to jump into it. So um, at the moment, the utility will just be merch and like a little bit of memorabilia as well. Uh, but there will be bigger utility in terms of like, you know, obviously having um, access to online platforms and um perhaps like having days in the studio and things like that as well. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So so lower mint price basically just hopefully um, to get a few more people in, in this, I guess, do community. You have a, do you have a mint community. date Are you in mind? Or is that still uh, being set in stone? Still being set in stone. I'm so buying one of these. A- it will be April. Like it okay. will be sometime. Oh, so it's this month? Yes, it should be sometime this month. So, okay, I'll keep yes. my eyes out for that. Yeah. Everyone keep your eyes out for that if you're in this space. It's pretty cool. One thing, actually, just before we go into this next question, like – how would you, because obviously you're painting so much in physical form, how do you take something physical form into a JPEG? Like, yeah. That's where my, that's like when we, you know, too hard basket for me. That's yeah, too yeah, hard yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, fair. Uh, so they, like, everyone's just like, what? Uh, so I, de- <laughs> I design them like digitally. Oh, so you do it digitally. And right. then I paint them. And then I take a photo of them and then they go back to digital. <laughs> so, That's unbelievable. I know. This world is nuts. Because, like, I really enjoy physically creating them and I feel <clears> like <throat> the physical – gifting the physical itself is utility. So I – I've everyone was like, no, 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 you can't do that. When it was still so – it's still so new, but, like, a year ago everyone's like, no, like, you have to do it digitally. And I was like, well – watch me. I'm going to bridge the gap between physical and digital. Uh, and we feel like it's worked so far. Like, who knows? I just feel like, you know, just test the waters. What have you got to lose? What I said before. And, um, yeah, so that's how they end up. That's but cool. for the next collection, there will be um, basically 11 artworks and 11 ind- individual NFTs of each artwork, which will be animated. Okay. Um, so it's like additions of the artworks, essentially. And then we're raffling the physical to one of the 11 pieces. That's cool. Yeah. Right, so because you touched on like the utility aspect of the NFTs, which is like yep. obviously these digital pieces for everyone listening, which is a big factor in driving value in these purchases. Yeah. Does it bother you like being a superior artist? Let's call you a superior artist because you are. That <laughs> no. there's really <laughs> mediocre art making like monumental money, like these artists that are just putting up like stick figures or whatever it may be that has n- nothing to do with anything and they're selling for huge amounts of money. Mate, I reckon if you can do it, just do it. Like yeah. someone sees value in it. Just and go for it. Like, of course, I know a lot of artists who get really caught up in it. They're like, how? Like, how? But like, at the end of the day, if like we could do it, we'd do it anyway. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'd like, I just, I, <laughs> someone connects to it. If someone buys it, someone feels something on the other end and they're receiving it. And who are we to say that that's not worth that? Valid you know? point. So like, and like, yeah, okay, like Gary V. Uh, you know, a lot of everyone's like, oh, his V friends are just like little scribbles. Like, the there is so much depth and meaning behind those works. Like, it's also like you know, a Louis Vuitton bag. Like, do you do you see value in it? Like, we might not see value in things that other people do. Like, what's a blue tick on Instagram? You can't even feel it. You can't touch it. It's just there. What is it? Mm. Like, so I think that's where 
people have to make that shift that it's all about like people valuing different things in life. And we might go through phases where we, we you know, I might like some of the NFTs I've bought, like, yeah, I bought some questionable ones. Yeah. Put my hand up. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, I felt something at that moment. I wanted it. You do it. You yeah. make that decision. Like, yeah. um, So I believe that there's a bigger picture to these ones that, you know, everyone's like, oh, but that sold for like, you know, 100 million. Like, there's definitely a bigger picture to that. It's not just solely a digital asset. Like, it's you're really, I think you're, you're investing in a community. You're investing in like potential opportunity because it is so new like you just don't know what is to come in these spaces and that's i think crazy. people are betting on that and that's and that's yeah. so fair 100 percent. that's really yeah. well really well um summarized now one thing i think's interesting with um your field as well is because i think being an artist and a painter of, of such is one aspect but being good in business and like business acumen is almost like a completely different world and i'm feeling like you've you've put a lot of time and effort to understand that space and like yep. be you know sophisticated there because a lot of artists potentially might not be the best at that yeah when they are a business how did you like put those or dot the i's and cross the t's as we said before yeah in the business sense? i'm glad you got that right because i have yeah, to say that again shit. i mince it um <laughs> <laughs> i i understand that a lot of artists it's not their priority um i think I just I just knew that I had to train myself to do it. If you don't want to like pass it on to someone else, then you've got to become good at it yourself. Um, and financially, you know, things have only really been consistent and good for me in the last sort of two, three years. So there was a 10 year window that I couldn't afford to outsource and I couldn't afford to like have someone work for me. So you either get good at yourself, um, which I, you know, I've, it's been hard. Like I used to get really down for like long periods of time. Things went wrong, but now I just sort of laugh it off. I'm like, you know, 10 things go right in business, 20 things go wrong. You're back to to minus 10. And then you just got to sort of chug along until things get good again. (laughs) Like, so I just find it amusing, but I've had to work really, really hard at that. Like I, anyone, like people think I'm joking, like going to the supermarket and doing basic tasks. Like I'm so bad at, like I have, I can paint a massive mural, but like, to go to the supermarket and be organised in some of those like aspects in life, I'm shocking. What? So like imagine someone work? like that <laughs> trying to run a business. business. <laughs> so I used to be late to everything. I like had no, like I'd forget things. Um, so if you look at my calendar, it's just incredibly colourful at the moment because, and, and, you know, shout out to Alessandra because she's like, yeah. like, my office is like very well organised and, I, I just had to work at it. It was simple as that. And, and you know, like dedicate time to, to personal development. Listen to podcasts. Oh, that's how they do that. That's how that. Like it's, you know, you're not just born like with these skills. And I feel like you can either outsource if you can, if you if you want to work on it yourself. But how, like also if I want to imp- make a team around me, um, I can't just expect them to like teach me everything. You know, I've got to understand it as well to be able to work like, you know, yeah. as a team. So... Wow, that's imp- so again, like you took the hard road and that kind of gave you the skill set in a sense. Yeah. Was when you mentioned challenges, like do you still have is there something for you that's you find the hardest today about your operation? Like still a big challenge or thing are you kind of at a point now where you've covered everything off for so long? No, there's so many things that I work on. Um <laughs> Far out. <laughs> there's so much. Far out. <laughs> I don't know, anyone who says like, oh, no, I'm good. Like, I j- there's always something else. There's always something more. Yeah, like, but what, what for you is your what, weakness? Because it's definitely not painting a fucking mural the size of Melbourne. So oh. <laughs> maybe it is. I still have to learn that <laughs> aspect as well. What else? Um, I'm learning how to like say no and set my boundaries and stuff as well. I think that's still like yeah. something that it's a work in progress. Um work like aligning myself with people that I want to work with not just doing the work because you feel bad saying no uh and then obviously the business you know I get caught up on things that I probably shouldn't be doing like content creation but I, like I love it so I just try to do everything and then I'm just like I'm spending so much time because I'm not good at it um so just like learning to outsource like which is what I mentioned before like I'm still trying okay. to get that and and hand things over and let go of a bit of control. So uh, mm. control freak. hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, you have freak. to be though, or else it's your time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like just really particular about. Yeah. Yeah. Things. Okay. Well, yeah. now you mentioned lovely Alessandra's name there before, and I touched on this at the start of the episode, and we won't go into detail of the Nike club, but I do want to um, 
But just to reiterate that, I've, I've reached out to Danielle. She's like, yeah, contact Alessandra. We'll sort a date. I contact Alessandra and she comes back and goes, oh, sorry, we've got Nike. Just so <laughs> the Unlaced podcast can come Love second that. to that. I'm like, oh, okay, broke, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do I say to that? Um, but I've seen also, I've seen like, I think I saw you in a photo with like Steve Aoki. And yeah. like, can you just go, I'm not necessarily a name drop here, but just like some of the people that are very profound in our world for yeah. their creativity or their, you know, whatever it is that they do that have come into contact with you, you've done paintings for. Like when I saw Steve Aoki, I was like, what the fuck? Is oh, I was in like, who else? Yeah, like who else? Um, How did the Steve Aoki thing come about? Because did you just see him and get a photo with him? Or we didn't yeah, so one or? of my friends um, is working with him on a project at the moment. So shout out to Gloss because they, um, and Lazy Things, that's their project. Uh, and he just said, oh, he, like he's, He's in Melbourne, like, do you want to do this? And that, and that was the time that I was doing that that mural that I just dropped, the 120-hour oh, one. So I literally did it. No sleep. <laughs> that night. Like, the day before I was finishing that, I did it, like, that night. And then I met him that morning and then I went off to work and kept going on the mural. Oh, my so, God. Um, yeah, so, I mean, him, like, I I think, like, obviously, The Rock, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, I don't know who else, I don't even um, Gal Gal Gadot, Gosh, she um, yeah, like I messaged her recently because she does follow me because the Rock showed her, and like just I just wanted to say like thanks for being a kick ass woman. Um, I mean, she literally is like shows away not n- even from like a, a I guess symbolic like Wonder Woman perspective, but actually like the woman that she is today and being yeah. um, with her like culture as well. Like she's done kick ass things. So yeah. um, her um, Tim Cahill back in the day. Oh Timmy C. Yeah, Timmy. Oh Who the else? golden boy. Oh my god! There's probably like many. I know you've got a lot, no, and the, I don't say I this say to like, like gloat, but I'm like, it's just, it's just amazing to me because you're just a girl from the southeast who's worked really hard. Yeah, it's so strange. And you've got like a very deep, which I can see in you, like a very deep inner drive. Um, so like, it's not luck, but it's just pretty cool and surreal yeah. to say that, like, yeah. you know, these people are coming into connection with you. Yeah, I think you like create. Yeah, because everyone always says like, oh, it's like lucky, and I was like, oh, I, I you know, like I think you you create like your opportunities 100%. for yourself with like how like the the, the, the con- consistent work that you, you put in. So, and yeah, I do like have a drive, like I'm probably like my own worst enemy as well, but because everyone's always like, you work too much, like you work too hard, like you got to look after yourself. And I'm just like my, like I, the, the feeling that I get from feeling unfulfilled is way more detrimental than what I feel if I'm tired and a little bit run down. So I just kind of like weigh the two up. I'm like, nah, I think I like that way better. So <laughs> yeah. My, everyone else might suffer a little bit around but me. But that's Sorry. why you work so hard. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what a, one, a coach uh, once said to me, his biggest fear in life is failure. It still yeah. stays with me. I'm like, what does that mean? And then, yeah. yeah, it's true. It is. Yeah. 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 I get a lot of fulfillment from, even if I'm not like kicking goals, as long as I'm just doing like, yeah, I think. This is um this is a bit of an odd question, but just because of what you said around the mule and the longevity of how long you worked in such a short, short space of time, like obviously when people play sport, it's like a physical fitness. Yeah. Is there a such thing as like a painting fitness? Because I yeah. imagine your brain would be freaking exhausted. Like yeah. it's always on when you're painting. Yeah, uh, definitely. There's like um, – there's – there's a physical, it's probably more of like an emotional mental battle because you're not always winning on your murals. So like you literally go from like, yep, this is good. And then you're like on a low and you've got to push through. Um, so there's like, I call it a marathon. Like every piece that I do, like I saw an artist the other day before I did a talk and I just, he's like, oh, you caught me at a bad time. And I'm like, I know all those feels. So hi, bye. Like, because I'm going to let you. Because mm. like people don't really understand like the roller coaster that you are going on. Mm. Um, my dad's probably the only person because he sees like that. Um, and in saying that, similar to athletes, like when you're like, you know, coming up to a fight or coming up to like a massive, I guess, event. game or yeah. event, you don't have the capacity for anything else. So when I'm on a mural and if I do like have a deadline and it is a big one, like I can't go out with my friends. Like I can't go like, I, I, I don't really answer my phone. Like I'm just like. Just home. Yeah. Back home yeah. And back so to that, job. that's all. And I know that like, I'm like, I don't have like, sometimes I'm just like, I just need five minutes in my brain. Like just, just a bit of quiet to actually be able to keep going. So definitely. Um, and then physically as well, like on those big jobs. Like, yeah, you know, like you're not standing on the ground sometimes. Like you're in a freaking yeah, I know, yeah. some sort of machinery oh up in the God. sky. I'm like, what? That, yeah, that, that guy had like when I was in a boom lift and it was really, really windy. I literally had like boom lag. Like I would be <laughs> lying in bed and I'd be swaying. Oh, no. <laughs> I had like vertigo for like weeks and I almost had to go get my ears like Oh, really? Because it was just, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So so physically too, like your hands, your arms, like your shoulders. 
um, your back as you're standing. You know, see, they're the things I would of, never think of. Nah, I just see don't. the process and I'm like, that's it. They're it's pretty pain. brutal. It's pretty brutal, especially out in like the winds and the, you know, like rain. Sometimes can be like, yeah. Mm. yeah. Do you have, um, I know you obviously murals is one aspect you do, but we've talked about the digital space, but is there any sort of particular form of art that you don't really like or for you you think is a bit more weak for you? Like in regards, you probably would like to get better at it because you obviously like some of the, like your murals are unbelievable, but... Do you love doing that versus painting on yeah. a canvas or? Uh, yeah, I think like murals, like they're just like, just like flares of fire up in my belly. And I just, it's like almost like, let's see how quick we can. Let's see, see oh, how really? like we it's can a do game. this day. Like, yeah, <laughs> just play like tricks on myself. Like it's so funny. That's cool. Um, I think abstract, like I love it and, and people think I'm good at it, but it challenges me like really? so much. Yeah, because there's like so much movement in it. Um, and you can just like so much freedom. It just like really terrifies me. So abstract, definitely. Um, I don't really do like por- personal portraits and stuff anymore at all. Um, do your friends reach out to you all the time? Like, and just go, Hey, um, well, I feel like they've good. stopped doing that yeah, now. Yeah, at this point now it's <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just don't want to put any more like pressure on me. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, no, probably nothing else really. Okay. Um, for you, this is one of the more final questions, but do you have like, do you have an end goal you want to achieve in this space? Like, do you, because you're quite obviously a visionary with your art, do you have that for you know, the business of, or the branding of Danielle's artwork? Yeah, I definitely want to get to a stage where I'm literally, you know, I, it's amazing to tell stories and like to paint people that people can connect to all the time, but I definitely want to get to a point where I'm literally just creating my own work. And, you know, that that starts from like taking my photo references, gathering my own inspiration um, and creating work that's just purely mine. Like, you know, like, oh, hey, that's Michael Jordan. Like, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. hey, like, whoa. Like, uh, right, so that detach is, from... Yeah, yeah, okay. detach from everything. Like, it's just like me. And I don't know what that looks like. I feel like I have an idea of what that would look like. Um I think like everyone's like, oh, but could you do it now? I'm like, I could, but I feel like that, you know, it, it, the journey will play out how it's supposed to and I'll get a time in my life where I'm like, oh, it's just me now. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> murals so, could stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably give myself a 10-year 10, 10 window for murals. Uh, well, i tell you what, Danielle, you are an unbelievable person, unbelievable artist. From the southeast, from the areas, it just yes. shows anything is possible. It is. <laughs> with some of the shoulders you've been rubbing with. But um, I'm excited for your NFT collection drop. Everyone listening – Keep your eyes peeled on social media to see when it does drop. Get onto OpenSea. What's it? What's your account on OpenSea? Um, might not be dropping with OpenSea for the next one, so just jump in the Discord. It's oh, in disc- the link in my Oh, yeah. get in the Discord, get people. In the Discord. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Well, thank That's you. safer. <laughs> thank you so yeah. much for, for coming on. No, we appreciate you. it Good and chat. sharing thank your story. Thank you. Appreciate you. Awesome.